It's been a week the banks would rather forget, but that's about to get a lot worse for this local manager. Sean Corley has been called a creep and a sleaze by some female customers and staff. He treats women like they're a piece of meat. How many of your customers have you tried to hit on? Once I made it clear to him that there was nothing happening, he declined the loan. Why can't you judge people's loans on their financials instead of bringing sleaze into it? I was horrified. I was disgusted. That's not something that anyone expects of a bank manager. Do you know people call you creepy crawly? He should be ashamed of himself. My advice? is to find someone that you feel comfortable with. This is the public image that Sean Corley tries to convey. A trusted finance manager wanting to get you a loan. But there's another side to Sean Corley. It's led to the nickname Creepy Crawley. He was creepy. He would just constantly be harassing. And it just didn't stop. Kirsty Gilmore still can't quite believe how a visit to her local bank branch could lead to so much trouble. She was asked if she wanted a loan. Her partner needed finance for a new work vehicle and then Sean Corley stepped in. It was hundreds of texts in the first week. It was like a barrage of texts just constantly coming through. Kirsty kept all the text messages, which she later provided to the bank. At first, she thought he was just being friendly, but claims the conversation then veered off course. People will start talking about our constant texts. Not that I'm complaining. Wink. Kirsty says she misread the texts and replied in a hurry, saying, I'm always in trouble. It's just the depth that varies. Trouble means enjoyment, which I'm up for if the desire is there. Wink. Kirsty says she told her partner about it immediately, but they were now in a tricky financial situation. He had sold his old work vehicle and already signed a contract on the new one, so they really needed that loan approved. But before that could happen, Sean Corley said he needed Kirsty to pick up an important form from his office. Kirsty says she tried to time her visit when the bank manager wouldn't be there. But when she arrived, the receptionist told her, Sean's still waiting for you. He said that I needed to go into his office. He shut the door. Um, he sat on the corner of his desk. He had his hands in his pockets and he was a bit, seemed to be a bit aroused. And at that stage, I ran out. A week later, he assures her the loan is approved and then makes another pass. Should I ask for those kisses from last Friday to turn into real ones now? Five days later, the loan has hit another snag and this seemingly diligent bank manager is trying to rectify it before asking. I'm still keen to know what you think, thought of my offer, read kisses, or is that venturing back into inappropriate territory? It was like he couldn't hide. He knew your address, your date of birth. He, they know everything about you. It made you feel really sick that there was someone in that position doing what he was doing and thinking it was fine. Kirsty's loan still didn't come through. She eventually visited a different branch and reported Sean Corley's behaviour. She was then contacted by head office who told her she wasn't the first female to come forward, but the first one to stand up to him. He just thought that he was just this big man that could do this to females. He didn't even bat an eyelid. When you would explain to him that it was wrong, he didn't care. I would say he's a pig. He should be ashamed of himself. And I hope that he has a life of nothing but misery. Samantha Hyde worked at Sean Corley's Bank of Queensland branch at Narangbar, north of Brisbane. Corley owned and operated the franchise for 10 years. Samantha claims he started sexually harassing her at her first probation meeting. He gave me a very long hug, kissed my forehead and said that um, if I ever need to talk, he's always there. As I walked out, he's then slapped my bottom. She says the married father of two continued touching her inappropriately at work whenever she was there on her own. As it continued, it got worse. I felt like I couldn't just push him away and say, you know, stop it, because I didn't want to lose my job. I was fearing 
losing my job. Samantha says she reported every incident to her branch supervisor, but his behaviour got worse, even showing up at her house uninvited twice. And he's then pulled me in and hugged me and then kissed me on the cheek. I've then pulled away and said to him, oh, I'm going to go and stand outside. My friend's going to be here in a minute. I was horrified. I was disgusted. Um, and once he had left, I was in tears. It's a far cry from some of his Facebook posts promoting equality on International Women's Day. I hope that he suffers the same way that he's made people suffer, mentally. Hi, Sean. Dan Nolan from A Current Affair, how are you going? Sean Corley was eventually booted out by Bank of Queensland and now works as general manager of another home loan business, GJ Finance. I just want to have a chat to you about some of your sleazy behaviour towards some of your customers. Uh, I'm not sure what you're talking about. How many of your customers have you tried to hit on? Oh, I don't know what you're talking about, sorry. Well, Dan. we know there was some at the previous bank you worked at. Do you want to elaborate on any of those? Uh, not, no, sorry. There has been at least one complaint from a female staff member against Sean Corley since joining GJ Finance. He's now been suspended from that job pending an investigation. What about the text to Kirsty about asking her for kisses while she was trying to get her loan application approved? I'm not sure what you're talking about, sorry. I think you know very well what I'm talking about there. I don't know what you've is that, is that appropriate behaviour? Sorry, Dan, I got my comment. She, I'm not sure what you're talking about. She says about. the whole loan application fell to pieces after she, you re, she rejected you. Mm, sorry, Dan, I'm not sure what you're talking about. Sean Corley was unable to get Kirsty Gilmore's loan approved in the three weeks he was handling it. Once head office heard her complaint, the loan was approved within a few hours. It was like he thought that he had us. If I did stuff, he would approve the loan. It was like a power trip that he had. Why can't you judge people's loans on their financials instead of bringing sleaze into it? Thanks, Dan, for your time. Kirsty Gilmore reported his behaviour to two senior members of the bank in June 2016, yet it failed to take any action for another six months until she'd made an official complaint. BOQ then suspended Sean Corley and a month later revoked his authority to operate and eventually bought back the two franchises he owned. It's understood the bank also uncovered other relationships between Sean Corley and his customers, which were described as consensual. It was overtly sexual, it was harassment, and um, that's not something that anyone expects of a bank manager. James Wright is Kirsty Gilmore's lawyer. He says Bank of Queensland has treated her poorly, given she was simply a customer who never asked for any of the sexual advances. There was never any counselling offered, for instance. Um, the responses we got were very um, formal. There was certainly no outpouring of, um, of uh, regret from them. In a statement, Bank of Queensland says it considers Mr Corley's conduct unacceptable and unequivocally apologises to any BOQ customer or staff member who believes that they were treated improperly by Mr Corley. If this was one of their family members, the CEO or the chairman, would they like it? They wouldn't settle for it. And late today we spoke with another BOQ customer who accuses Sean Corley of inappropriate physical contact inside his office. As I went to leave, he stood up uh, and placed himself between me and the door uh, and pressed himself against me. She's furious with how the bank handled her complaint. There's been no support offered from Bank of Queensland. The issue has been dismissed several times. Uh, there's three women as well that I have actually raised the issue with and none of them have taken it further. Samantha Hyde is also angry with the bank for failing to investigate Sean Corley sooner. She says bank staff from other branches thought he was a creep after witnessing his behaviour at conferences. They come up with a nickname called Creepy Crawley for him. His last name is Corley, so it suited him quite well. Do you know people call you Creepy Crawley? Where'd that name come from? Bank of Queensland's statement regarding Sean Corley is on our website. If you've had any dealings with the former bank manager, please get in touch. Our email address is on your screen.